Hey everybody, welcome to Garage Gear. My name's JB and today we're gonna talk about probably one of my favorite things in the whole garage. So here I am in the Jeep, we're pulling in. Take a look. Pretty cool, huh? Let's talk about how it works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a lot to talk about with this stoplight. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like to necessarily hear me talking, well, sorry, I don't know what else to say, but please like the video, like and subscribe. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, this stoplight, very cool, very fun project. It's very in-depth. There's a lot to discuss with this. Uh, this stoplight actually came from uh, Kenmore, New York, uh, just outside of Buffalo. And it was actually a used stoplight. And my father-in-law, he was a police officer in Kenmore. And he was in the area one day and they were actually replacing some stoplights. And this one was sitting on the back of a truck. It was green at one point. And he said, hey, you know what? I want it. And he took it to one of his auto body guys, had him paint it pink. He gave it to my wife when she was much younger and it literally sat in her bedroom. And then it, when we moved into our house, it sat in our basement for a long time. And I always said, you know what? I want to do something to that. I want to power this thing. I want to make it look cool. I want to hang it up in the garage. And uh, then I started thinking, how cool would it be if as I pull a vehicle in, it actually goes green, yellow, and then red. You know what? I suppose I could have used a tennis ball to maybe bump off the windshield as I pulled this vehicle in. But you know what? This is hands down way cooler. So uh, as you can see here, I got all the lights powered and ask yourself this, when was the last time you saw a traffic light with all three lights running at the exact same time? Probably hasn't been in a very long time, if not ever. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so that's a, a pretty rare sight to see in itself. And the cool thing about this is this is powered by, uh, this box right here down below and then it's got a sensor down lower. So I'll show you all that. I'll kind of walk you through it as we go. Here. So let's talk about the sensor here. This is the all important tool, ladies and gentlemen. This black sensor reads my bumper and it basically judges the depth. And basically when I pull in about halfway into the garage, this will then turn the light to green. And then as I come in a little further, it then turns the light to yellow and then finally to red. So that's now to set the distance for this sensor down here is actually very simple. I can actually just pull the car in exactly where I want it. And you can notice here I have walking room in front of the vehicle. And that's part of the reason why I put this park zone and traffic light up is because my wife would actually pull too far up and I wouldn't be able to walk in here. And I do a lot of work in my garage, ladies and gentlemen. So to be able to get around a vehicle is actually kind of important to me. So here you can see I have walking space. I can walk through here. So I pulled the Jeep up to where exactly I want it. Gives me enough leg room, all right? And then all I gotta do is take this brown cord here and plug it in. And then what'll happen is the uh, traffic light will blink green a couple times, then yellow, and that sets the distance. Once that sets the distance, I'm good. I can back the Jeep out, I can pull it back in, and it'll actually go green, yellow, red, exactly how I want it to. So, sensor sends the message up to this box, and this box is basically the brains of the operation here, ladies and gentlemen, and what's cool is I can flick these switches here, turn all the lights off, Turn all the lights on. I can turn them all off with one kill switch here at the bottom. And I can turn them all back on just like that. So very cool how that all works. And I can just turn them all off and then go like that. And now it goes back to basically car mode. When I pull the car in, it will uh, then go green, yellow, and red. And then it automatically turns itself off. And that's how it works. So... So the next piece of the puzzle let's talk about is this box. And inside this box, yes, you see the three switches on the outside. I'm sorry, four switches, but uh, the main kill switch is right here. 
uh, there's a lot of brains going on inside this thing and there's a lot of wires and there's a lot of solid state relays and I'll kind of get into how that all works. But basically what I used was a park zone unit. And if anybody knows what that is, I'll try to get a picture here in the video. And with that park zone, basically it has that sensor and then it has a mini traffic light that you hold up and, or put a little higher on your wall and it'll go green, yellow, red, and then it'll automatically turn off. Well, those run on very small LEDs, very low power. Uh, some of those units are battery powered. Some of those units are hardwired where you can plug them into the wall. So uh, I actually started out with one of the battery powered units and then that would link up to the solid state relays and then the solid state relays link up to the traffic light itself. Well, uh, the battery powered units, I was changing batteries every month in here. And I did that for about a year. And I was like, you know what, this is kind of a pain. And then I decided to actually get a bigger box and a different park zone unit that you plug into the wall. And that's basically how it runs now. So everything's hardwired. The traffic light itself is hardwired uh, to the house. And the park zone unit plugs in. And that's actually what this brown cable is for down here so don't judge me on the color of the cord here but it uh, everything works here just fine so let's get into what's going on inside the box so now in order to get in the box you need a screwdriver so it's a giant flathead and i'm going to twist that open and then she opens up so now if you are truly interested in finding out how i do this um, I'm going to do my best to explain it. If you start asking seriously critical questions on wiring ele electronics, I can only help you so far. So I'm going to do my best to be of help with this. If anybody's planning on doing this in their garage, I honestly will try my best. But there's going to be times when I'm going to say, I don't know, because uh, a lot of this was trial and error, a little bit of luck. And I did have some electrician friends come in here to help me. But all in all, this was a complicated task. Okay, so the park zone unit, let's talk about that real quick. The park zone unit, which is this green circuit board back here, and you can kind of see the red light on it, there's a yellow light on it, and there's a green light down a little lower. That unit cost about $20 to $30. And the first one I bought, like I said, was battery powered. And that wasn't really much good because I just had to keep replacing batteries. So then I stepped up to this one that you plug in. So that's where the adapter down low here plugs into the park zone to power that. And then I had to basically hot wire from the circuit board of the park zone to the solid state relays. Now, if you get, if you start asking me, Hey, what, uh, what exactly, what parts of that solid state relay did you wire it to? You're going to have to kind of figure that out on your own. I'm sorry, because uh, there were a handful of park zones that were all different. I noticed the circuit boards were a little different in the, the battery powered one and different in the, um, uh, hardwired one they all looked at just a slightly a uh, little bit different so depending on the one you have I can't give you an exact answer how you hook it up but I just kind of soldered little wires from the park zone to the solid state relays along with the hardwire line coming in along with the five volt tube kind of ramp up the power from there the solid state relays ramp up the power and then send it back to the light and light it up so these solid state relays were uh, I want to say I think I got them for about 10 or $15 a piece. And I just bought some used ones on eBay and they work just fine. And uh, lots, of, I had probably one of the most expensive things was buying all the wiring. I had to buy a lot of, a lot of wire for this. And uh, there's a lot going on here. It kind of looks a little messy, like I said, but if you start following the wire lines, I did label some of these. So like down here, it says solid state relay to green light, solid state, relay to yellow light. That's what it says on that one. This tape says solid state relay to red. Uh, the power line is marked up here. And then I even labeled some of these little ones with red, yellow, and green wires to the solid state relays. So I also had to jump from one relay to another to uh, create the power trickle all the way down. Uh, so this was quite the confusing thing for somebody who's really not good at electronics or electricity. So guys, I was very much an amateur at this and I apologize if I can't really provide much better information, but at least you're getting a look here. Um, I did see one video a long time ago where the gentleman had a box similar to this. He said he used some solid state relays, but he gave no instructions on how to ramp up the power 
to the stoplight. And I tried and I asked him, and I sent him messages and I said, Hey, how did you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? And I never heard back from the guy. And so, you know, I'm trying to be helpful here as best I can, but Again, I can only take you guys so far, but that's how it basically works. We're going basically from the sensor at the bottom, sends a message to the park zone. The park zone then sends the message to the solid state relays. The solid state relays then go to the traffic light that way. So over here, you can see how I've basically linked up the switches. I kind of have all the switches tied together on one end and the power coming in on another so there is a lot of wiring in here, ladies and gentlemen. And this was a fun project. This was not an easy project. This was definitely not a weekend long project. This was, we're talking a couple weekends all together. So here I'm going to shut this uh, door here. And then that's that. So uh, one of my favorite things about this is just the fact that I can flick switches here and turn lights on. My niece absolutely loves seeing these things all lit up. I'm actually gonna do something with Halloween where I put like uh, like a stencil inside the light so it shines out. All right, so that's gonna look kind of cool. Uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, so we have the traffic light itself. And if I open up the end here, this is a normal traffic light when they actually uh, gutted this thing. They took everything basically out of it. But as you can see, as I open this up, I have just a really small bulb, a very reflective lens. I have a green lens in the front. So this is an old style uh, traffic light. And it's got just a couple of wires that I had to put inside. Um, there was like a busted looking circuit board in there. Uh, I don't really know exactly how these all work in the streets. All I know is they turn green, yellow, and red. So um, it was actually that busted up circuit board. I just junk because it really wasn't much to me. I didn't know how to work it, and that's that. So, and, and... All right, so let's real quick uh, talk about some of the flaws that are part of this project. Uh, definitely get a hardwired to the wall park zone. Do not get one of the battery powered ones. Uh, they are junk. You will regret it down the road. You do not want to go through all the trouble of wiring like I did and have to basically repeat the whole process. That will be very, very annoying. All right. So definitely just go ahead, get the one that you plug into the wall. It comes with the adapter. It comes with everything you need. Um, that's probably the first thing bulbs on this. I usually burn out the green bulb first. Why? Because as I'm walking through the garage, if the Jeep is not parked in the garage, uh, that green light will flash on and off as I kind of walk by. Just It just does that. The sensor picks up my foot, uh, it picks up the movement in the room, and it'll flash green. So not really an annoyance or anything, but uh, the green bulb will burn out uh, usually the quickest. Uh, they're small bulbs. They're just like 60 watt, maybe 40 watt bulbs are small. I usually get them in like a four pack and that's that. So really nothing too, too crazy as terms of, in terms of trouble with this. All right. So the overall cost of, let's talk how much it's going to cost you to power a stoplight in your garage. So the first off the park zone was, I think about $30. Somewhere around there. It, it might have been 20, maybe 30 bucks, but the park zone, you definitely need to get one of those. So uh, you can get those on eBay. Um, that's where I got mine. I think they might sell them at Home Depot. You'll have to look. Okay, so that's the first piece, and that was about 30 bucks. Uh, the tubing, the gray tubing, uh, let's call it 10 bucks for all that. That wasn't very expensive at Home Depot. The box, I had to order a, a metal box. That's a pretty big one, it's about 12 by 12. Uh, that box, I actually had a smaller one before and it was cramped in there. And, and every time I opened it, stuff would just fall out. So I recommend getting a bigger box. That box was about $30 too. So $30 for the park zone, $30 for the box, $10 for the piping. And then the bulbs, those are pretty cheap. Those were a couple bucks. The solid state relays were about $15 each. I would say, and then the wire, all the wire that I needed for this project, I was probably in 
to this whole project for about $150. Now you might say, whoa, hey, hold on a second. That's a lot of money to spend on this. Well, this was something fun. This was something that I wanted to do. This is something that I wanted to basically restore. And I, I think it would have been an awful shame to just have that stoplight just kind of sitting in the basement, collecting dust, doing absolutely nothing. People walking by and saying, hey, where the heck did you get that pink stoplight? Well, here I can actually, you know, put it on display for everybody to see. So, you know, I really enjoy, uh, you know, pulling in the garage. It actually, I, there's never been a time when I've, I've been upset about having this stoplight in the garage. I've never been upset about it. And there's been times we pull in the garage, we maybe have guests in the car and we pull in and they see that green, yellow, red, and then they say, wow, holy cow, that's so cool. How did you do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Now you kind of see how that all goes together. Uh, yes, it is a little complicated. If you're good with electricity, electronics, bam, this should probably be an easy thing for you. But if you're kind of like me, an amateur, it's going to take you a little bit of uh, finessing to get it right. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. I know it's it's kind of unclear in terms of the wiring, but this was a trial by error project. And, uh, you know, I have my dad to thank for this because he helped me out with this. He's pretty good with electricity and electronics. Um, I did have an electrician come over here. He kind of helped me out a little bit. And uh, I've had some other people help me out along the way. So fun project. Very cool. Love doing it. Love having it in the garage. Probably my favorite thing in here, ladies and gentlemen. If you have questions, comments, I'd love to answer them for you, you know, as best as I can. Thanks to everybody for tuning into Garage Gear. Please like and subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, to all the people that have subscribed to my channel, love you guys. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Got plenty of new content coming out for you guys all the time. Stay tuned. Have a good day, everybody. So if you are one of those that is going to plan to do this project on your own, I actually found these schematics on my computer after I filmed this video, and this plan actually helped me out a lot when I was putting this stoplight together. So if you look to the far left, you will see the three toggle switches, red, yellow, and green. Then if you follow down, you'll see the uh, power switch, which controls basically everything. Then you'll see the sensor in the middle that connects to the park zone, which has the circuit board there in the big rectangle in the middle. Those connect to the solenoids, or the also known as the solid state relays. And then that finally connects up to the stoplight itself. So good luck to everybody and thanks for watching.